Hi everybody, this is video one of three that will document each function of the multi-sensor electronic learning board. We will talk about the pin blocks in detail, we will talk about each circuit in detail, we will talk about the schematics, we'll talk about the pin blocks, we'll talk about everything. And once we're done those three videos, that's when we'll start tinkering around with our connections and how to interface with other boards. Now, today we're going to talk about each of the pin blocks. However, we're going to concentrate specifically on the power supply circuit, the power supply pin block, and the sensor selection pin block. Now, along with the sensor selection pin block, we'll discuss the schematics that surround the magnetic sensor, read switch, the light dependent resistor, light sensor, the electric microphone, audio sensor, and the vibration sensor. So we'll go through all of that, and next time what we'll do is we will discuss the comparator block and aspects of the um, the main sensor block. And after that we'll discuss uh, the interfaces such as the relay interface, the PIR, passive infrared motion detector interface, and the thermistor interface. We're also going to talk about the potential for interfacing this with a Raspberry Pi. So bear with me, three videos, I'll make it as, for, as uh, practical as I can and as short as I can. Here are the pin blocks on the multi-sensor electronics learning board. On the upper left, the thermistor pin block. On your V2.0 boards, you can plug in the thermistor attachment here. There is no polarity, just simply plug it into the board and you're off to the races. On the lower left, the power supply pin block, also known as the power rail, has eight pins. On the top side, there are four five volt pins. This is a, uh, an, this will allow for you to power external circuits. And the bottom pins are ground. Uh, they're all common ground, all four of them. So you can interface with again other circuits. The comparator pin block is where we control our two onboard comparators. Now that we'll get to a little bit later. The main pin block on the lower right is one of the most imp important pin blocks on the entire board and it has all of our main signal inputs and outputs. So we're going to get to that a little bit later as well. The PIR pin block, the passive infrared sensor pin block, is where we'll connect our PIR accessory. There are three pins, ground, signal out from the PIR, and 5 volts to power the PIR sensor. Again, we'll get to, the, to that a little bit later uh, when we actually bring out a project with the PIR attachment. We're just about to talk about the sensor selection pin block. There are eight pins, and this is how we will select between our microphone, our light sensor, our vibration sensor, and our magnetic sensor. The sensor selection pin block allows for us to choose between the microphone, the light dependent resistor, light sensor, the vibration sensor, or the magnetic read switch. The sensor selection pin block has eight pins and we use a two pin jumper, these really small two pin jumpers to uh, connect either mic, the mic pins, the LDR pins, the VIB pins, or the mag pins to select which sensor we're working with. Now in this picture I've uh, jumped the two pins relative to the MIC, to the microphone, and that means that we are now working with our microphone. So using a two pin jumper, all you have to do is fit it on those two pins and we're ready to go with our microphone. Now we'll get to the circuit later, but this is just how we're going to select between these four sensors. Next we'll talk about the LDR. The light dependent resistor, LDR, uh, seen with the arrow pointing at it, is essentially a resistor that changes its resistance based on how much light and how much darkness is touching it. So, in order to select the LDR, we want to short the LDR pins. As you can see, I have a two-pin jumper connecting the two LDR pins, and uh, we're actually going to be doing a ton of different uh, neat things with this. So, you know, if you want to choose your light-dependent resistor, just simply add a two-pin jumper to the LDR lines and we'll be ready to go. The vibration sensor is the blue looking component on the board and uh, as you can see there's a little arrow pointing at it. In order to select the vibration sensor, simply place your two pin jumper on the two VIB pins on the sensor selection pin block and we'll actually be able to do a couple neat things with this. We can create a square wave based on vibration or we can uh, couple it and gain levels of vibration. But again, we'll get to that later. Let's talk about the reed switch. The magnetic reed switch 
on the left detects magnetism. And the board will actually come with a little magnet that will allow for you to toy around with this. It is essentially on off. It is normally open. And you can select it by placing a two pin jumper on the MAG pins on the sensor selection pin block. This is our power supply circuit, our power supply pin block, and we'll get to this in just one second. So this is your DC power jack. This is where you're going to plug in your AC to DC 9 volt 1 amp adapter. Once you plug it in, you power the board. The secondary side of the power jack offers uh, two supply lines, positive 9 volts DC and uh, supply ground, or common ground. Now you'll notice that there's an upside down triangle here, or an arrow facing down. There's also one here, 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 and here. And you'll see them all over the schematic, and that means that this is a, this is a DC ground line. It's an indicator. So this is connected to this, is connected to this, and this, and this, and anywhere else you see this common ground line. It's very, very important. It is one of the most uh, important indicators on the board. Our 9 volts, our positive 9 volts, is fed into a 7805 5 volt regulator. 7805 is a 3 pin chip that fits into the board, and what it does is it takes that 9 volts and it regulates it down to a steady 5 volts, which makes it compatible with PIC, Arduino, Stamp, TTL, etc. Now, pin 2 is a, is a common ground line. It's always, it's always necessary to have ground lines on integrated circuits. Pin 3 is a regulated 5 volts. So anywhere we see on, uh, an indicator like this on the board labeled either 5 volts or VCC, it means that that is a power supply line, and that's where 5 volts is being applied. So remember that, 5 volts or VCC. Now these two capacitors are on the output here, and there is a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, which means it has a polarity, there is a positive and a negative side, and the, uh, the other capacitor is, in, is a a ceramic capacitor and it does not have a polarity, there is no positive or negative side. And what they do is they work together to turn our potentially noisy 5 volt line into a steady 5 volts. Now when you power it on, what, what will happen is the board will see right here, power up from 0 volts to 5 volts. But because we're using, we aren't using a battery which is which are really stable, we're using a uh, an, an AC to DC adapter. So we might see some ripple on the 5 volt line and occasionally maybe a spike or two. And what these capacitors do is act to a more or less smooth slash filter out those little spikes and turn into a nice steady 5 volts. Now if we didn't add those in we might see some odd behavior on the integrated circuits. Maybe not, but it's always good to have some supply line capacitors. In this case 100 microfarad and 0.1 microfarad were chosen. So we've got our 5 volt line which is being fed to the entire board right now. Our power supply pin block has 8 pins on it. The bottom, th bottom 4 are all connected to common ground so we can use this to interface with other boards. The, fi the top all are connected to 5 volts and we can use that to power external circuits and we actually will. We're going to use that to power our PIR sensor we're going to use that to power our relay, and we could potentially use it to power our Arduino, but we'll get to that way, way later in other videos. <coughs> Pardon me. Anyhow, here, right here, let's say we wanted to interface our board with Arduino. All we would have to do is power it up, and uh, if the Arduino had its own power supply, that's fine. You can use the 5 volt line to power the Arduino, but you can also plug in your uh, DC jack for the sensor board and your DC jack at your Arduino, doesn't matter. The big thing is the ground connections. What you need to do is make sure that the ground on the sensor board is connected to the ground on the Arduino. Now there are uh, obviously ground pins here, and on the Arduino board there are, ground, there are ground pins. So all you have to do is connect here to here. Now if you want to use the sensor board to power the Arduino, uh, what you have to do is just plug in your sensor board and connect the two 5 volt lines together. So we'll use any one of these top pins, 5 volts, to power the Arduino board. Uh, and ground, of course, very, very important. You can use, again, your separate supplies, but you have to make sure that they're, both of the grounds are connected or else the signal lines from here to here just won't be able, they won't be compatible, they won't basically interact with each other. Always interface ground to ground on your external circuits. So anyhow, if you have any questions based on that, happy to answer. Uh, message me through Kickstarter, message me through engineeringshot.com, leave a comment on the YouTube video. Next we'll talk about the uh, sensor selection circuit.
I know it looks like there's a lot going on here, but rest assured it's actually quite simple. And if you're not satisfied with the explanation, when I get into the project videos, each project video that employs whichever relative sensor will have the circuit equivalent with all, without all the mess. And I'll re-explain it. So anyhow, this is our sensor select pin block. Note, note the uh, pins here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If I connect the two pin jumper to these two pins, shorting those two pins, and I'm selecting the, me uh, the magnetic read switch. If I place the two pin header connector here, I select the vibration sensor. If I place it here, the uh, LDR. If I place it here, I select the microphone. All of these sensors uh, have the secondary side connected to ground. The only component here that has a polarity is the microphone. There's a positive and a negative, and the negative is connected to the ground line. So again, ground all connected to these spots. So <clears throat> this resistor right here is tied to the 5 volt line, the VCC line, and it acts as a protective resistor. I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute and more in the videos. It's also considered kind of a pull-up resistor. Now, when I, say I connect the microphone, I've got three pins on the V1 board and it'll be two pins on the uh, V2.0 board. On the on the current board, there are two div pins here, div 1 and 2, on the main pin block, and uh, the AC pin on the main pin block. Now, there's two different modes here. Again, on the sensor, on the V2.0 board, I will get rid of the div 2, and I'll be using that pin for something else. What this is, is uh, we'll look at the AC coupled side. Because we have this 10K ohm resistor here, pulled to 5 volts, even when we have a sensor selected, there's going to be a DC component. And what's a DC component? Well, let's look at this. On this side, this is where we'll see our DC component. Each sensor will have a different voltage uh, or waveform here, depending on what state the sensor's in. The LDR in red, uh, because we'll have essentially a voltage divider, which I will be talking about later, depending on how much light is hitting the sensor, we will see a different voltage on the div lines. And it'll be between, say, 1 and 5 volts. So in red, LDR, I'm showing you an analog voltage that's between the 0 and 5 volt threshold. Now the ma uh, magnetic read switch in the vibration sensor, depending on the state, will either be 5 volts or 0 volts. Again, depending on the state of the sensor. We'll get more into that later. And the microphone in, uh, in blue, you can notice a noisy 5 volt line. And that's essentially, when you speak into the microphone, we're just going to see a 5 volts with, with the audio wave riding the 5 volt line. Now, you can't do anything with that. And that's what the AC pin is for. Now, the AC pin, we'll use that for the LDR. We'll use that for the microphone. We can use it for the, the vibration sensor. We won't be using it for the magnetic switch, read switch. What we have here is, uh, it's a coupling capacitor. So... Notice that we have elements of DC here between uh, more, more than 0 volts up to 5 volts. We want to block that. Now, here's a way to remember this. See the capacitor. It's a 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor. And there's a gap in the middle of the schematic symbol for it. That's essentially blocking the DC component on this side. And we'll couple across changes, quick changes, that are on the 0 volt line. So if we're speaking into a microphone, we have it selected, and we're talking into it, we'll see... Nothing in the, the 1 to 5 volt range, but we'll see little audio representation coupled on the zero line, or on, this, on the 0 volt line. So right here for the microphone, that signal riding the DC, 5 volt DC component, we basically get rid of that DC component, and we only couple over that little bit of audio information, which rides the 0 volt line. And then we can, we can use this pin to amp, we can amplify that signal, we can do all sorts of things with it. So we block the DC component with the capacitor, couple over just the audio signal in the case of the microphone, and this uh, resistor acts like a bleeder, because if we're connecting this to an I.O. pin, and there's no resistor there to bleed off any excess power, then we might, uh, we might see some funny results on this line. It also creates a uh, high-pass filter, but it's designed so that it's... Uh, it's not going to obstruct any of our uh, sensor outputs. So in the case of the LDR, if we wanted to make a, uh, a laser circuit, we can actually make one, and we will, with this line and with this line. 
We'll use one with a variable voltage. Again, LDR, variable voltage between 0 and 5 volts. And we'll use one with a coupled signal. Now, say I've got a laser pointed at the light-dependent resistor. And I break that laser. What I'm going to see on the AC coupled line is a quick jump on the 0 volt line. And you can amplify that. And we can really work with that. So we can make a really, really, really sensitive laser tripwire circuit using the AC line, or we can make a less sensitive uh, one with the div1 slash div2 lines because we have the DC component here. Now hopefully that makes sense. The magnetic switch is on or off. You might be able to see in the middle there's essentially two wires and when it's normally open and when it detects mag uh, magnetic uh, pulse, it connects. The vibration sensor, right here, essentially has two little coils inside. When you shake it, they make intermittent contact. So, when we actually uh, do our demonstrations, you'll see all of these uh, on the LED, on the oscilloscope. We'll have a lot of uh, opportunity to play around. But right now, I'm just trying to give you the basic idea of how these circuits are working. Now, the next video, uh, we'll be talking, again, about the... Uh, the uh, comparators and the uh, operational amplifiers and we'll talk about the 555 timer and uh, we'll talk about the main sensor pin block. We've got a lot to cover in these three videos and after we've done those three videos we're really going to get down to some fun and neat projects where we do some plug 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 go you know plug plug calibrate calibrate go. So thanks for watching guys this is video one of three I will have the remainder of the uh, three videos done hopefully by uh, the end of the first week of February, likely soon, much sooner than that, but stay tuned, I'll be updating the Kickstarter, the Kickstarter link is below. Thanks for watching everyone.